looking at starting on something else. Uh, we're not gonna watch this one. <laughs> free content. I know this is basically free content. So Matt Turk summoning salt. Okie dokie. Wait, uh, Matt Turk, Mike Tyson. This one, three years ago, history of a blinded punch out. Uh, let me know which one it is. First one. Oh, okay. Two years ago. Got it. All right. All right, guys. We'll go ahead and get this started. Let me mark down the time. It's 424. Let's go. In the early 2000s, one of the largest speedrunning communities out there was for the I'm gonna turn up the music. Turning up the video a bit. Dozens of players from all yeah, Mike Tyson Punch Out is awesome. The fastest times they could on Definitely a classic. Fighters. I played a lot of it on my PSP. Alright, let me know how the volume sounds, guys. These guys sent emails back and forth detailing their strategies, posting on old websites like Game FAQs, and kept track of their fastest times using online leaderboards. Okay. There was a really fun mix of randomness and skill involved. Absolutely. These strategies for faster times were regularly Is it a bit quiet? Okay, I'll turn it up a bit. Fresh and encouraging others to see just what they could discover. Should be okay-ish. Punch-Out! remained as one of the most popular no? speedrun communities in the world. Speedruns of this game are insane. You need good RNG. Down. Yeah, dude. People That's better. Okay, cool. Playing the game. And in a matter of months, one of the most played speedruns out there suddenly lost all of its competition and Ooh. silently faded into the background while other games took its spot. Okay, Matt By Turk 2008, just about is at the center of all this, yeah. Anymore. But then, in 2010, a player known as Sinister One became the first player to speedrun the game in years. Okay. What he found was a deserted community. The game FAQs pages with strategy discussion had been deleted, emails sent back and forth had long been forgotten, and pretty much all that remained was a website called Dylan Runs Red That Don't Tom's Need Punch RNG or Glass Show, Don Flamenco, the world record and was for uh, each of the Great fights. Tiger. Sinister One was shocked by what he saw here. All 14 records were held by the same guy, a person named Matt Turk. Okay. None of them had any videos for proof, and it was hard to even find evidence on how Turk did each of these fights. After finding Matt Turk's email address and talking with him a bit, Sinister realized a couple of things. First, all signs pointed to every single one of these records being legitimate. Okay, second, that's good news. Matt Turk's skill level was way, way beyond any other player in the world. So this and guy was, was basically goaded on the sticks at Mike Tyson in the world, okay. At least, that's, that's what he thought. So pro, you don't even know. <laughs> Title. Wow. Okay. What do we got? These are the 14 world record times that Matt Turk had achieved by the time Sinister rediscovered the leaderboard. They didn't have video proof to go with them, but especially given when they were performed, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Oh, dang. Hardly anybody was uploading speedruns to the internet in the early 2000s. Turk did, however, write down some of his strategies in detail on Red Tom's punch out site explaining how he achieved many of his times and how others could do oh the yeah same. yeah i know he mr salmon uh, and came up with so much so go even faster in my opinion i didn't even know that i didn't even know that this was like rng based at all i thought it was but all to scripted understand how good they were we'll have to first understand the basics it makes of the sense it makes sense punch out a very tricky game to speed run punches and hitting them with your own punches courtesy of the fists of little mac ball bulls a fun fight he looks so dumb whenever you hit him can eventually lead to a knockdown Three knockdowns in one round is a TKO, which will end the fight. It's also possible to KO some fighters, where they don't get up after Mario the referee counts to ten. Yeah, I never got that. I never so, got a Turk KO. These that never times happened. From either TKOing or KOing each fighter, we'll break down how we did them later. But for Sinister One to beat or tie most of them seemed out of the question. Thankfully, though, two of them were world record freebies that anybody watching it's different speed match punches with a little bit of practice. to mess up time last joe and Don crazy Flamengo. yeah i would definitely not want to be running this game as a speed run glass joe is an infamously easy fight and his world record yes, is infamously easy to attain as well 
His strategy simply involved waiting until he did his attack at 40 seconds. A well-timed punch to the face upon him charging forward will knock him down in 42 seconds. Yep. <laughs> I did that before. The fight will end at 42 points. Class shows easy. Punch out runs at 60 frames per second, and there's two frames to time this punch for Glass. Which is pretty huge. Down at 42 yeah. For a game this world with timing like this, 60 frames is crazy. Probably ever since the game came out in 1987. The second relatively easy record is on Don Flamenco, the fourth fight in the game, with a strategy discovered by Martin Charlebois in the late 90s. Oh, what a name. To tie this record, Sinister had to punch him, dodge out of the way, okay. then wait and punch Don Flamenco in the face on the last frame before he would block the punch. Mm -hmm. If he's yeah. able to land it in the 60th of a second window, he'll get a star punch, or an uppercut that deals more damage. To Don Flamenco, this punch does enough to automatically knock him down. He gets up, but upon dodging his punch and hitting him in the face five times, Don Flamenco goes down again and okay. doesn't get up. <laughs> That's easy. KO at it's easy enough. Seconds, a world okay. record that has been tied for at least two decades. Two easy ones. Sinister tied both of those records in early 2010. 1% chance was going to be a lot for the fastest setup. Down. No more freebies. Now, It'd be insane to dodge. You'd have to, to be a madman. The whirlwind. Throughout 2010, Sinister One got a lot better at the game and lowered each of his 14 times down, but they still remained comfortably behind. Half a percentage of his chance. Thankfully, though, Yeesh. he got some hope later that year. Okay. A player known as Adelicott was interested in the Hippo record, which was another one that Turk had reached the theoretical lowest time on, 37.61. To pull it off, however, was another story. King Hippo is a super random fighter. On yeah, I remember King Hippo, throws, dude. He can either open his mouth or not. He has a 3-8 huh. chance of opening on any given punch, and you can only hit Hippo when he opens his mouth. Weird. I didn't know that. Times in order for I to totally forgot about that. To beat him. So to get the fastest time possible, you need Hippo to open his mouth on each of the first three times he throws a punch. That's three eighths times three eighths times three eighths. What? Or about five point two seven percent. Okay. But that's not. That all. seems like a high Half percentage the time, for the. He also does a delay ones we're about to see. Third punches. To get Turk's Thanks, time of thirty-seven seconds. I appreciate can't it. Can't do that delay, which cuts the odds in half. So the sheer odds in getting the I'm hoping to be that moist critical only about 2.64 nighttime version. <laughs> the execution was extremely precise as well because of how the in-game timer works. It ticks faster than a real second. Yeah. In -game second being I don't like it when video games do that by the way. Or when a they third of a real when second. seconds aren't really seconds, For they're like reason, schmeckens. The programmers only made certain decimals possible to achieve on each fight. 0 .00, 0 .25, 0.48 0 0.61, 0 0.82, 0 0.97, and 0.99. Mm, if you end okay. the fight in the first few frames of an in-game second, you get 0 0.00. In the next few frames, you get 0 0.25, and so on, all the way to 0.99. Yes, stonks. His time of 37.61 meant he could lose up to two frames before actually losing time and getting a 37.82. On average, you have to hit Hippo on either the first or second frame he opens his mouth on each punch. That is some really precise timing. Now keep in mind, even if you're able to execute that precisely, you only have a 1 in 40 chance of getting the correct pattern from Hippo. Sinister One's fastest time was a 37.97, but in October 2010, Adelicott Pretty came fast. through and tied Turk's 37.61, which I mentioned before can't go lower at all. What's okay. crazy is that even with Just all that Hippo, though, right? execution, that was still considered one of Turk's easier records to match. With that, the Punch-Out! community had managed to take down three of Turk's times. But Just these like three that. all had something in common. <laughs> He's still got of a Turk's lot more. 14 records, it was known that four of them were at their theoretical limit and couldn't be beaten, only tied. It had been known for years that you couldn't go under 42.00 so on Glass Joe, under 14.97 on Don Flamenco, and under 37.61 on King Hippo. And all three of those times stand as the world records even today. Okay. But for most of the remaining fights, the limit on how low humans could go was unknown. 
Turk's times were incredible, but for most of them, it was at least theoretically they possible They found something new on Great Tiger. Order. But in order to do that, you would need to either beat Turk's okay. execution, or get better luck, or both. Enter Mr. Sandman. Turk's Sandman time was 220.00, the slowest of all 14 fights, but that doesn't mean it was his worst. You can't get star punches on Mr. Sandman to deal damage quickly, so even beating him in the first round is hard. We'll get into the actual strategy okay, okay. behind this fight soon. Yeah, but Sandman, I never got... Sinister One was able to I never got past Sandman. It seemed like it was just another Turk time down, but then Turk actually Anything responded beyond that is like beat Sinister's time with mind blowing. 219.48. Once again with no video. Sinister would get a 219.97 <laughs> that wasn't recorded, but he couldn't compete against the 219.48. So Turk was back on top, and his time once again stood unrivaled. Until a guy named Zallard1 got his hands on the game. Yes, dude! Holy shit! What? Zallard began playing Mike Tyson's punch out seriously in early 2013. Okay, One so this is a time frame. Early on was none other than Mr. Sandman. This fight from July 2013 shows his strategy to beat Mr. Sandman quickly. I was still watching Tyson speed runs. Broken down into phases, with phase one but being I wasn't the really following the world knockdown, records. Phase two being until the second knockdown, and phase three being until the TKO. The first phase of the fight involves dodging out of the way of Sandman's rolling jabs and hitting. Oh, that's the okay. Pace. I don't mind. You also get hit a couple of times on purpose, and you'll see why later. There's two 50-50 random delays Sandman could do. And he did one of them, leading to a 120 first I was knockdown. like dropping Phase some two swears pretty Sandman hard. A bit more, then a random <laughs> the delay previous All Night America. Express pattern. Three extremely quick I was pretty, uh, avoid getting hit pretty by. tilted. <laughs> Zallard got the shortest delay from Mr. Sandman and then pressed left up, left up, and left up really quickly in sequence to dodge the Dreamland Express. This allowed him to hit Mr. Sandman in the gut 18 times in a row to deal damage yeah. extremely quickly and yes, send him sir. down for a second time. Now, here's where getting hit comes into <laughs> it's play. It's okay, though. It turns out that Mr. Sandman is programmed to do I added a new emoticon to, uh... Mac gets knocked down at 159 or later into the, <laughs> the fight. demonetization so emoticon, uh... <laughs> figured out that by pressing select before the fight to lower your health to half... Emoji. Damage I keep early calling him the And then getting knocked down on purpose after Sandman's second knockdown, you can end the fight quickly after he does a second Dreamland Express. Yes. Fuck yes, dude. Oh. oh my god. That was a warranted F bomb. He did he did a good thing there. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe that! This time from Zallard tied Sinister's 219, but he could still save a second in Phase 1 by not getting the random delay that Sandman gave him. But adding all that luck up across all three phases got crazy. He needed neither of Sandman's Phase 1 delays, the shortest delay for the first Dreamland Express, then a good health refill for Mr. Sandman for Phase 3, and the short delay for his last Dreamland Express. Okay. That put the odds at 2.34%. That's low. But even once Zallard got all of that luck, he also needed to just not mess up. Yep. And with Mr. Sandman, that's kind of hard. Very hard, I'm not gonna lie. Unless you know the... Yes! Everything oh like this God. guy does. What is it? What is it? What is it? Holy shit, dude! 219 oh on the dot. I did it. I actually, this is it. I beat him at Turk Ton. Dang. Last, one Must of feel Turk's pretty good. Had actually been beaten. Zallard one was the guy to do it, and his time was celebrated across the Punch Out community. It broke new ground Yeesh. and made Turk seem not invincible for the first time since Sinister came onto the scene in 2010. Okay, it's getting it lit now. It's getting real heated. To officially beat any of Turk's records. Four times down, but Turk still had ten records all to himself. Yep, that's still Turk's a lot. One of Turk's finest times was his Piston Honda 2 record, 50.97. He did what on Honda? This time was remarkably close to the tool-assisted record for Honda 2, which was 50.25 seconds. A tool-assisted speedrun, or TAS, can create a theoretically perfect time by using save states, slowing down time, 
and even going frame by frame to enter inputs. So, wow, well, come on. Task with save states would be um, but not a demonstration fair. The fastest it's not a real possible. task. And Turk was just frames away from matching it. He was able to get it by doing guard manipulation, where you can fuse Piston Honda by tapping and releasing up at strategic points to move his guard around so he can't block max punches. It's extremely okay. difficult, and at one point requires a frame-perfect punch to the face while his guard is in a moment of weakness. Matt Turk's time mirrored the theoretical tool-assisted time, probably just losing a bit of time from losing frames from imperfect execution. Imagine competing he with the say, task, though. Beating Turk's Honda two time was nearly impossible, so it stood unrivaled with all of his other records. Meanwhile, in the years following Sinister One's initial punch-out grind, he had focused much of his efforts playing single segments, where you play the game from start to finish and add up your times in each of the 14 fights. He streamed his attempts live on his Twitch channel, and people had gotten used to him speedrunning the full game. But then one day in August 2013, he just started up a stream of Piston Honda 2 world record attempts. <laughs> Keep okay. in mind, Turk's record is 50.97, and it was impossible to go under 50.25, so there wasn't much room to get a world record. At least, that's what everybody thought. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. I just need fucking Taz. Oh my god, I'm holding start so hard right now. Wow. I'm holding start more than I've ever held it in my life. <laughs> yes! What does holding start Fuck do? Yes. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. I just beat the Taz. I just beat the motherfucking Taz. Oh my god. It's going to be a low 48. 48 flat. Oh nice. <laughs> That's slick. Oh my god. It's a sleek time, dude. You beat a task. You beat a computer, man. You just beaten the theoretically AI perfect get bent. tool system AI speed get run bent. by more than two seconds. Sinister had just pulled off a fight Humans with his own two hands, faster than anybody had been able to even theoretically figure out with an emulator. What had just happened? Well, unknown to everyone watching his stream, a few days prior, someone had figured out how to beat that theoretical Piston Honda 2 record. His name was McHazard. And after discovering it, he privately messaged Sinister One to tell him about his findings. The main issue with the old tool assisted time was here in Phase 2, where he had to wait a long time before throwing a star punch. Honda normally starts dodging any star punches you throw at him after the third one, but if you wait to throw it until he's doing his appropriately named eyebrow pattern, it'll land and deal damage. Oh yeah, the eyebrow so, pattern. I remember using that one back when I was playing Piston Honda. The eyebrow pattern began. McHazard figured out a way around that. He discovered that Piston Honda 2 has a bizarre mechanic that few other fighters in the game have, max damage uppercuts. When Honda's guard is down, you can press up and start to throw a star punch uppercut, then let go of up when Honda huh? brings his gloves up. For whatever reason, if performed correctly, then not only can Honda not dodge this punch, <laughs> but it also deals more damage than a normal star punch. That's weird. So, Sinister simply implemented this max damage star punch when he would normally be waiting for the eyebrow pattern in phase 2, and sent him down about 5 seconds faster than normal. Over the following months, okay. McHazard would broaden his search for faster strategies to all 14 fights, and ultimately made a new, faster tool assisted speedrun of the entire game. It featured improvements to 8 of the 14 fights, meaning 8 fights now had new theoretical load times that humans could try to get closer to. For the past few years, the only time that had been there. toppled were ones that were already theoretically perfect, or ones that were more obviously imperfect like Mr. Sandman. But with this new tool-assisted speedrun, the horizon expanded so much. McHazard had completely changed the playing field. It was time to see what else these players could do. Alright, 2014, April. Seems like this is the speedrun month. Everybody <laughs> the next big push plays in April. Turk's times came during one week in April Summer 2014, <laughs> where three of Turk's records were about to go down. It's here we see just how important the Hazard's task was going to be. Coincidentally though, the first one had nothing to do with his tasks. I mentioned before there was a fourth record Turk had set that was at its theoretical limit. That yes. fight was Great Tiger. Okay, we already this know it can go lower. How low can it go, though? Remember how Don Flamenco has that frame-perfect punch to get a star? Well, Great Tiger has four of them. 
Okay. After punching Tiger in the face, you dodge out of the way of his jab, then wait until the last frame before he would block and punch him in the face. If you hit the perfect frame, then you get a star punch, before having to repeat wow. this process three more times in the first phase. Thankfully, phases two and three are free. Great Tiger gets up on a one count twice, which means That's a pretty nice star though. punch from Little Max will phase one down, down automatically. There's no randomness in this fight, and thanks to a couple of timing strategies Zaller discovered to time a couple of the punches late in phase one, the only difficult part of the fight is the four face punches. But keep in yeah. mind, you have a sixtieth of a second to time each of them. Someone just had to grind the fight out until they got the four frame perfect punches, and on April 5th, Zaller was able to pull it off. He got a 47.48, tying Matt Turk and the theoretical perfect time. Dang. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sinister One was working on his own project. Matt Turk's piss and Honda one time of 42.97 was a bit of a mystery, since it was one of very few fights where he didn't reveal his strategy. However, Dang, he's thanks just to keeping it to himself, tasks, huh? Sinister was able to come up with an even better one. Bad sportsmanship. <laughs> Phase nah, 1 was just a kidding. variation of a strategy Sinister had discovered years prior, using heavy guard manipulation to sneak in punches all over and get stars. Key parts to this phase included landing a gut punch at the start with a 3 frame timing window, sneaking in an extra gut punch toward the end of the phase that had a 25% chance of going through, then not getting blocked at all on the last 3 face punches, which is about 50%. 12.5, dang. Okay. So a single star punch was enough to send him down right It's all away. RNG now at this at point. At the start of phase 3, Sinister would do a max damage star punch similar to the ones McHazard found on Piston Honda 2, then hit him in the face and do a couple Are of Are people still speedrunning this game? With a good health refill from Honda, or has it, it been be like completely solved? 42 second time and beat Matt Turk by just a little bit. The odds in getting this fight were under 5% from randomness alone, not taking into account wow. the rather difficult execution. Nonetheless, Sinister very That's quickly surprising. got a run to phase 3, but unfortunately the bad refill from Honda meant he had to delay a couple of star punches and get a 43 instead of a 42. Fuck. I got the bad <laughs> refill. Yeah, 43 flat. God damn it. I got the bad refill, guys. Dang, that's painful, I got dude. The bad refill. Sinister was getting really close. It's out of his he control entirely, man. He was a second away from taking another Turk time down. All he needed was to get that good He'll get it. Phase He'll three. get it. I know he but will. Then, this video is quite literally not even nowhere. halfway there. He'll this get happened. it. Shouldn't I just quit right now? <laughs> my head? No, fuck that. Let's do the Von Kaiser IL strat. See if I can do it again. There we go. Holy fucking shit, dude. <laughs> I think I just did it. Wow. Oh my god. Just what laid Von Kaiser out flat, bro. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my god. Oh my Dang, god. man. Oh my god. Little Max goaded. Oh yeah, I should be talking like that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my Speaking a little god. bit softer. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sorry, it's hype oh though, god. it's hype. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How? Okay. If you recall from before, 35.97 matched Turk's Von Kaiser time. Yep. Where did that come from? Well, Mike Tyson's punch out has no level select, and you aren't allowed to use save states to get to whichever fight you want. Yeah, that's There is a password cheaty. system, but passwords only exist for a handful of the 14 fights. Mm hmm. So the fastest way to get to Piston Honda was to start a new game and beat both Glass Joe and Von Kaiser before getting your one shot at Piston Honda. If it didn't work, You'd have to lose intentionally and then beat Von Kaiser again just to get another shot. Okay. Sinister randomly decided to go for this newly discovered phase one strategy that McHazard had found, and it happened to pay off. It involved precisely tapping up at certain moments to manipulate Von Kaiser's guard up so that all of the punches went through. He also had to get a random 50-50 star in phase two. Tapping up before- Very precisely what? duck under a punch in phase one and phase three by double tapping down. <laughs> he also had to time the first punch wow. in phase two on the first frame possible. In order to get a 35.97, you 
he had to lose no more than a handful of frames across all of those locations. And on literally his first attempt after getting the phase one strat to work, he got all of that. That's crazy. Was incredible. And a that's couple a, of days after that, Sinister was able to what's get What's the percentage on that? On is he going to say it? This is, in, uh, this is it. This 14, is it. This 2014, is it. This 2014, okay. Is it. Rip, Dirk, you are done. I got <laughs> 42. Fuck yeah. 42 <laughs> fucking five, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> Rip, Turk, Hell yeah. dude. Get hype. And with that, Turk's down, over man. the course of four days, thanks to the combined efforts of Sinister, Zallard, and McHazard, that's another one. Three of Turk's. Oh, that's three down. more. Okay. But of course, Matt Turk still held six untied records, and the more they played, the more these six times seemed ridiculously impressive. Keep in mind that some of the game's top players have been trying for four years now, and they were only able to match or beat about half of them. <laughs> Let's take a look at Turk's Don Flamenco 2 time. Okay. One twenty. Stakes are high. Seven. This one was a bit of a unique The hard case. ones, yes. Skill-wise, it was ones. actually one of the easiest times in the game. But luck-wise, it was absolutely brutal. Mm -hmm. See, the way Dawn 2 works is whenever he's about to throw a punch, you can hit him while he's winding up either in the gut or in the face. Okay. On the first punch you throw, and every seventh punch after that, you'll get a guaranteed star. On every punch between, as long as you're holding a star, you have a 1 in 16 chance in getting another star. And believe me, that is horrible from a speedrunning perspective. Right. For example, you can theoretically get That's 3 quite random bad. stars in a row on Dawn 2, which would be great, but your odds in that are 1 in 4096. What? It's like a shiny chance. Is also random. There's a 1 in 8 chance he gives the lowest health refill, a in, 3 in, in a couple seconds, no refill, less. And a 4 or in 8 one chance second. he gives the bad refill. Yeah, two. If you press select before the fight to lower your health to half, what? as speedrunners often do on this fight, that also makes his phase 3 refill random, with just a 1 in 8 chance Wait, you can press select to lower your health. health to half? Why the programmers made Dawn 2 like this is unknown. What does that do? It's not like anybody would pay attention to these random stars or refills when casually playing the game. But it leads to some pretty ridiculous fights if you get the luck. The tool assisted speedrun of Dawn 2 gets 5 random stars and both of the low 1 and 8 refills, achieving a time of under a minute. They did it in the Sandman. The odds of getting those stars and refills is about 1 in okay, 6.7 okay. million. What? Turk's 123.97 was much slower, but punch out players worked out I that see. beating it still required ah, okay. about Okay, I didn't know you could do that, that's crazy. They would need a random star from one of the first two opportunities. Dude, the there's no way you can get that million two, chance. No, 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 no. That's just not gonna happen. In phase three. I Someone guess people are still speedrunning it for that aspect. And the guy who did it was a fairly unknown punch out runner named Kananaphone, whose specialty was speedrunning the Legend of Zola. Kananaphone. And he had also done some work in punch out, and for some reason, I like that name. Toward fighting Dawn too. And on May 28th, 2014, after hundreds of attempts. He got all the luck to align. How? Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Hey, beat Don 2. He had only beaten Turk by <laughs> he one. He doesn't sound too excited about it. <laughs> Don 2 was done, and another of Turk's times had fallen. Matt Turk still had uh. five times left. These remaining times had each stood unbeaten for more than half a decade. Jeez. In that same length of time, the Ocarina of Time record had been lowered by 55 minutes, <laughs> Super Metroid had been lowered by 5 minutes, and Super Mario Bros. had been lowered by, well, 2 seconds. That's still the big. Fact that even That's still big. efforts from several of the world's top punch-out players hadn't been able to break these 5 times was just extraordinary. One of the most brutal times remaining was Turk's Bald Bull 1 fight. It featured a combination of crazy luck, really precise timings, and the need for persistence. Turk said it took him over 1,000 attempts to achieve this time. <laughs> Keep in mind, to get an attempt at Bald Bull, it's you have to put in the password for Don Flamenco 1, then beat him, King Hippo, and Great Tiger. And then so bubble. it took him a wow. really long time to get his 58.99. The way he did it was by simply attempting to replicate the tool-assisted fight as closely as he could. And it was a brutal strategy indeed. 
It involved needing three random 50-50 stars throughout the fight, two specific patterns from Bald Bull, and numerous frame-perfect or close to frame-perfect punches throughout. The odds worked out to just a 2.3% chance, oh. or about 1 in 43. There's actually been some confusion over what Turk's exact time was, initially being reported as a 57.99, but years later being changed to a 58.99. How does that happen? This time just seemed brutal to beat. And then McHazard came along and changed everything. In his tool assisted speedrun, one of the eight fights that McHazard improved was Bald Bull 1. And a few months later, Zallard used it to do attempts to beat Turk's 58.99. McHazard's Phase 1 was discovered by Martin Charlebois 15 years before uh, his task came out. Okay. It involved alternating face punches to get stars and using star punches into his rolling jabs. It was easy, it had no randomness, and it always got bowled down at 17 seconds with one star. Phase Seems pretty solid. You need a 50-50 random star at the start of the phase, then land a 2-frame punch just as Bull is lowering his guard and get another random star just after. You then need a 25% pattern where Bull throws more rolling jabs, and can send him down with 3 stars in your inventory. For Phase 3, okay. Sallard used a slightly safer version of McHazard's fight. To pull it off, you need the 75% pattern without rolling jabs, then depending on his pattern after, potentially need to land a frame-perfect star punch after his uppercut. That's a 1 60th of a second window to time it. Across all 3 phases, frame perfect. that works out to odds of about 1 in 21, about twice as good as Turk's fight, and the execution was a bit easier too. So, Zallard set out to improve Turk's time, and on June 22nd, 2014, he came through and got a 57.00. Okay. Turk by nearly a full second. That's crazy, Keep a whole mind, second? Though, McHazard's but, task what, time okay. was 55.25, so although Turk was off of his task by about 0.15, Zallard was slower than his by almost two full seconds. <laughs> That's how much McHazard's strat was able to help. Sheesh! For Bald Bolt 2, it was once again McHazard to the rescue. Turk achieved his time of 121.82 by landing extremely random punches called Bulldozers. When Bull's guard is down, if you hit him in the face but let go of up while the punch is going off, it's possible the punch will get through his guard <laughs> and hit him for a star. Called a bulldozer, The problem right? is, when I say possible, I mean it has a 1 in 16 chance of actually going through. It was possible to beat Matt Turk's time using two bulldozers and getting a specific pattern from Bull after, but the odds in it were over one in a thousand. So McCann okay. found a way around it. That's still not as when bad Bull's as the million. Up, he found you can punch him in the gut and tap up while the punch is going off to potentially sneak the punch through his guard. It was called a misdirected gut punch, and you could do it whenever you'd normally do a bulldozer. And rather than a one in sixteen chance in going through. The misdirected gut punch had a one in four chance. Better, so much, of much, much better. One in a thousand of beating Turk's time, the odds were only about one in sixty-four. That was enough to get Sinister to start grinding to beat it. The execution wasn't too hard. I would the two too. rolling jab mm, counters dang. at the start were the hardest part, and they each had a three-frame window. On July fifth, twenty fourteen, Sinister One took down Matt Turk's eleventh world record. World record, world fucking record, dude. <laughs> yes, <laughs> fuck yes. One twenty point eight two. Got another Thanks one. To McHazard, another one. Both of the Bowl records went down. Okay, two. In about two weeks. All right, Soda. Matt Turk now only had three. Macho and Tyson today. are left. Soda Popinski, Super Macho Man, and Mike Tyson. These three records had stood the test of time. These three records had stood through thousands of attempts from top players in the world. These three records stood head and shoulders above each of the other 11 records Matt Turk had set. To see why, let's take a look at that Super Macho Man time, 48.82. Execution so was spotless. The There's a password that you can put in that sends you straight there. That made it That's so you good. Can do a lot of attempts it's really Very quickly. nice. The bad news. The execution was really hard, and the These three records the could beat you up so hard you would want to quit. <laughs> Let's break it down. Macho's usual pattern yeah, for real, man. five That's punches like... before standing still Literally. for a while in the build-up to his mini-spin pattern, where he spins around quickly and tries to punch you. For the first five punches <laughs> of the fight, 
The first, second, fourth, and fifth punches all need to be uppercuts for Turk's strategy to work. So, Turk's strategy was to raise RNG his guard City, and punch man. Him in the gut, then intercept his first uppercut with a punch to the face before he ducks down. His second uppercut is then taken care of by raising Macho's guard to hit him in the gut again, then hitting him in the face before he ducks down. Punches 3, 4, and 5 are cancelled before you can throw them by hitting him in the gut. Then Macho stands still for his mini spin pattern. Turk unleashed a barrage of max damage star punches and punches to the face and gut, all while moving his guard around by pressing and releasing the up button at strategic times. In order to get all the punches in needed to knock him down, Macho needs to stand still for as long as possible, which is only about a 1 in 4 chance. So, altogether, not counting attempts missed for execution, there was just a 1 in 34 chance of getting out of the uh, first phase of the fight. Just the first phase, phase too. Two, wow. Macho okay. Once again needs to stand still That's absurd. To get I can't. Uppercuts. And three stars need to be Doesn't make me want to run this game. <laughs> that bumps the odds up to just over 1 in 90. The execution of uh, okay. sneaking each punch in also needs to be tight enough for the clock to not roll over to 37 seconds before beginning a spin pattern. And to give you an huh. idea of how hard that execution is, these are the inputs that need to be done to sneak in all of those hits. Macho's I assume they're going by the- transition. yeah, they're just going by the See, game's the by record, up, not actual. Throw a face punch, but must release up while the punch is being thrown so Macho doesn't- Timings of their own, I guess. Then. The uppercut is done by pressing up and start, but releasing up right after Macho brings his guard up so it does max damage. Then, a technique Turk invented called the Dizzy Destroyer is performed. <laughs> the you Dizzy tap up, Destroyer? Then immediately I like it. release it and throw clever. a gut punch. Very clever. Then press up and beat to throw a face punch, but let go of up while the punch is going off so Macho lowers his guard and the punch can hit his face. Finally, one more gut punch is snuck in by tapping up to bring Macho's guard up, then pressing B to throw the gut. That's a lot of inputs, and it's all performed right here at the start of phase two. Perfect so then, far. Macho backs up to go into a spin pattern. In Macho's spin pattern, he spins around between three and eight times before stopping for you to land your star punch. The clock stays frozen this whole time, but in Which order is to weird. throw your star punch fast enough, you need to know when he stops instead of doing another dodge. The two ways to do this were. 1. To listen for the last spin punch, which is slightly higher pitched than all the rest. Or 2. Stare at the clock, and then as soon as it starts moving again, throw the star punch. I would do that one. That was, seems phase easier <laughs> than audio of cues. Instead long delay before a spin pattern, you need the short delay, since Macho gets up with less health the second time and doesn't need to be hit as much. That pushes the odds to about 1 in 181 in getting the luck needed to beat Macho in 48 seconds like Turk did. Oh, Not man. to mention the precise, tight, and essentially flawless execution needed the whole way through. So we're looking at odds of about half a percent, an execution harder than just about any fight in the game. Who would be crazy enough to try to top that? Who would? Well, I want to know. One, of course. We're a little over and halfway. I'm like, okay, star punch. Is he gonna get this? I mean, he has to. And he's to. just like, nope. In the middle of 2014, Zallard began doing attempts to beat Turks 48.82. He was a veteran of the game at this point, so he saw results very quickly, getting times of 50 and 49 in July and August, respectively. These Dang, fights both lost time for one second. Because the clock ticked over or one schmeckin', I guess. Spin pattern, meaning his execution was a little too slow. But hundreds of attempts later, that 48 was still untouchable. Zallard realized that tying Turk's time would be hard enough, but actually getting under a decimal of 0.82 was going to be essentially impossible unless he added in something that Turk didn't do. Which so, is? that's what he decided to do. He would assume that Macho would stop spinning on the third spin punch of Phase 3, allowing him to throw the uppercut faster since he didn't have to wait for the audio or visual cue. Okay. This didn't guarantee a time under 0.82, but it at least gave him a better shot. Unfortunately, Makes sense. it made the luck needed even worse. Macho has Wait, just what? a 5 in 16 chance of stopping on the third spin punch, so the odds of the entire fight were now over 1 in 500. Ooh, Zallard what? streamed some of his attempts to beat Turk's time, but <laughs> most absurd. of the attempts just looked like this. 
This 48.82 oh, was legendary. Just Power resetting threw immediately. Attempt after attempt at Macho, but it wasn't happening. He had to hit punch after punch, be precise in every location, and wait for one in 500 odds. It didn't look like it was happening. And then, Zaller got this attempt past phase one. Okay. Oh my god, at 25 with a star? How did that happen? That's fucking crazy. Tell me summoning oh. salt, I need to know. Okay. Because I got that 25, that saved it. He's going for the hit. He got yes. it. Holy shit, dude. He got oh it. Did he match Turk? Tie it, tie it. Looks like he did. As he sat there waiting for the time, he was praying that it was fast enough to tie Turk's point eight two. But he knew there was a slim chance he had gone even faster and gotten a point six one. Oh yeah. All he could do now was wait for the fade out and see the blue screen. <laughs> Longest five Holy seconds shit. of his life. <gasps> he got it. <laughs> Oh my god, it's over! It's wow. Over. How many months did he, he do that for? Like three or four? <laughs> a 48.48. Wow. Turk's time wasn't tied. It, it was beat. Out. It was thoroughly beaten by Zalard 1. It was beat. 1 in 500 odds. Straight up beat. And Matt Turk now only had two untied records to his name. This 213 on Mike Tyson was. By a long shot, the hardest fight to pull off out of all 14. No kidding. On Don Flamenco 1, Turk hit a frame-perfect punch. On Great Tiger, Turk had to land four frame-perfect punches. To get Tyson, his 213 I'm guessing Tyson, like 32. Turk had to land 20 frame-perfect punches. Okay, that's pretty... Oh, that's a lot. Tyson's pattern is to throw uppercuts for the first minute and a half of the fight. You can hit him twice after each one. Yeah, 20, one that's even worse. Damage as long as it's from the same side of the screen that Tyson threw from, and the second one normally deals one damage no matter what. Good gravy, However, 20. However, if you delay the second punch to the last frame before he would block it, it deals five damage instead of one. That's a frame perfect punch. <gasps> what? You have a 60th of a second to time it. And for the first phase of the fight, literally all you're doing is landing frame perfect punch after frame perfect punch. <laughs> Tyson begins the fight with 96 health. Since he could deal 10 damage on each punch Tyson throws, that means Tyson must throw 10 punches for you to be able to send him down the first time, and you need to be frame perfect on 9 of them to get an optimal first knockdown. Jeez, Even if man. you get the 9 frame perfect punches though, Tyson's pattern largely determines what time you get. He can randomly delay for an in-game second between certain punches, or potentially even do a long delay called the 8 second delay, which immediately kills an attempt. In Turk's 2 an 8 second delay. He got a pattern from Tyson where he flat out didn't delay at all. Wow. A pattern that was only about 3.5% likely and That's what they want, likely, big time. And led to a first knockdown time of 54 seconds. For the second phase, That's what they he gets need. up with 56 health. That means 6 punches from Tyson, and you need to be frame perfect on 5 of them. Tyson could give random delays here too. So what's important is that you get Tyson to throw that 6th uppercut before he switches his pattern from uppercuts to hooks at 130. As long as the uppercut comes out before 130, it's all good, even if the knockdown comes a few seconds later since you have to punch him down. Turk got one delay from Tyson in phase 2, but thanks to his perfect phase 1, it led to a blazing fast 128 second knockdown. Jeez. In phase 3, Tyson switches to throwing hooks. If you wait to the last 60th of a second before hitting him after he throws a hook, that single punch will deal 5 damage. If you're early, you'll have to punch him twice for 4 damage total, and if you're late, you'll get blocked and deal no damage. Ooh. These frame perfect okay. punches are generally regarded as tougher to hit than the uppercut ones. Tyson gets up with 40 health for phase 3, so 8 frame perfect punches would be a perfect phase 3. Turk hit 6 frame perfect punches and got a bit of a slow pattern from Tyson, but it was enough to set a world record of 213. This 213 stood apart from his other records in a way. Its legacy reached far past his other 13 times, and for years it was just this impossibly fast time that the top players couldn't even get close to. 
Not only did it land 20 frame perfect punches, but the pattern he got from Tyson was just ridiculous. He achieved this time in December 2007 with Holy knockdown times of 54, 128, and 213. As of mid 2014, nobody else had ever gotten under 55 for the first knockdown or 129 for the second knockdown. Turk not only was able to get that 54 and 128, but then capitalized on it in phase 3 and played almost perfectly. Of course, other top players fought Tyson years later, but their best efforts came up short. In February 2011, Sinister once set his long-standing personal best of 219. He got okay. a second knockdown of 132 thanks to a slower Tyson pattern, and then hit <laughs> four frame-perfect hits in phase 3 to end up with his time. For years, that was the fastest. What I'm wondering is why they're going over Tyson then, before the. Uh, 2014. Is this the last one they're going after? 217 with a 133 okay, second well. knockdown. Six frame perfect hits in phase three led to the fast time, but still. I Turk's thought it was still soda pop. Seven years prior was four seconds faster. They couldn't touch it. It stood alone. But then, in July 2014. Sinister One decided... Well, there was no strategy. Okay. <laughs> all of Turk's records had fallen by that point, but his 213 was still standing. Sinister had two viable paths to beating it. The first was the long shot, where he would get the second knockdown by 133, which didn't require too much luck, then hit all eight frame-perfect hits in Phase 3. Hitting all eight frame-perfect hooks in Phase 3 could save five or more seconds over Turk's Phase 3, meaning his Phase 3 pattern essentially didn't matter. Hitting all right. eight frame perfect hits guaranteed he'd beat Turk, and could potentially <laughs> beat him by several seconds. I reckon that's what he did. <laughs> but I hear the course, music. Hitting all eight was ridiculously hard, and had only been done a handful of times in the game's history over several years. So he had another plan. The second method was what Sinister was aiming for: getting a first knockdown closer to 130 then getting a better pattern from Tyson in Phase 3 and hitting 6 or 7 frame perfects like Turk did. He essentially just had to match Turk's execution, then get better luck at the end of the fight, and would end up with a time like 2.11 or 2.12. Sinister's personal best was a 2.19. Over the course of a few months in 2014, he put in thousands of attempts to beat Turk and get a 2.12 on Tyson. Here's thousands. And, I mean, don't you have to get to Mike Tyson? Don't you have to put in the code and get there, too? I mean, we saw it on other Whoa, characters, but wait. There might be a code for Tyson, isn't there? That'd make it a lot easier, at least. I would hope there would be one. Wow, 216, dude. Holy shit. I just beat Zaller. The only way to fight Tyson is a code. Oh, that's right. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, that was almost a 54. Yes! Yes, dude. Oh my god. PB. Alright, at least I got a PB. PB? Holy Let's crap, go. Man. Is that a Plutus yes! Arcadia reference? Ah, I tied Turk, at least, baby. I tied him. I tied him. Tied him, tied him, tied him. That's hype. had tied Turk's legendary 213, but he wasn't satisfied. He didn't want to match Turk. You want to beat him, man? Yes, sir. It was 212 or bust. How much more grinding did that take? <laughs> what an insane amount, I'd imagine. Here's the day. Here's where it all comes together. On September 6th, 2014, the Punch Out community woke up to this. Hey, a <laughs> not a 212. Achieved a 210? by Zalard, not Sinister. While all eyes were on Sinister, Zalard had quietly Excuse been me? doing attempts in the background. His personal best was a 216, three seconds behind Sinister, but on one magical attempt, he dropped it by six seconds after landing all eight frame perfect hits <laughs> off of a 132. <laughs> it was the first time Zallard had ever hit all eight in phase three. That's nuts. The 213 was done. Zallard was the new Tyson champion.
Yow. Only had one untied record to his name. Soda. Soda Popinski in 46.48. What was it about this fight that made it stand so long? Why did it outlast Don 2? I want to know too. Absurd what was stars? it? Why did it outlast Macho with the 1 in 500 pattern for the 48? Why did it outlast the 20 frame perfect punches on Mike Tyson? That's a question. The That's a burning is question, man. Simple. Nobody had any idea how Turk did it. Yeah, while Sinister and Zallard were spending months trying to beat each of Turk's 14 records, this one always just stood in the background. It was like a bad itch they just couldn't scratch. For all of the other 13 records, they at least had a path to beating them. They knew what he did and they knew how they could improve over it. For Soda Popinski, they had no idea. And since there was no video to go with it, they actually thought it could be a bogus time. Really? Turk Let's might be lying, but nah, I don't think so. Eating soda fast takes advantage of a bizarre glitch-like mechanic. When Soda throws an uppercut, if you press down to block or duck, Soda freezes in place. What? You're free to hit him in the gut when he does, and the star you get from that punch will automatically knock him down no matter what. So you just do that once in each phase to beat him very quickly. Soda is also very random. He always starts each phase with two hooks, but then he only has a 75% chance of doing the uppercut pattern you need to beat him quickly. Okay. He can also randomly delay before the uppercut, with only a 25% chance he does the shortest delay. So you'd counter each of Soda's first two hooks, then duck and hope Soda does the fastest uppercut, freeze him in place to get the star, He's confused then cancel his next blocking uppercut and the use pause. the star to send him down. Oh. And if you did that in each phase, your time would be 49 seconds. Three seconds behind Turk. You couldn't cancel his hooks any faster. You couldn't force a faster pattern. A 46 was just too fast. And so, long after each of Turk's other 13 records were beaten, this one stood and stood and stood. Till when? When did it go down? And then, McHazard came to the rescue. By early 2015, Zallard was very interested in finally taking Turk's last time down, so he asked McHazard for some help in figuring out how. McHazard pointed out that there were aspects of the tool-assisted speedrun for Soda that could probably be utilized in a real-time run, namely, getting the frozen punch for a start quicker. The old process sure. was holding down, then waiting for his uppercut, then having him freeze and punch him in the gut. With McHazard's method, you could press down, then assume he does the shortest delay and press B to gut punch, then press down while the punch is going off to freeze him in place. This works to get the star just the same, and it saves about 2 seconds, meaning phases can just potentially enough time. be just 15 to 16 seconds long. Sure. And as it turns out, this is likely the method Turk used to get his time. The problem was, even with this strategy, beating Turk's time would be incredibly tough. You need both uppercuts and the shortest delay for each phase of the fight, which works out to odds of 1 in 151. The execution was tricky too, since the input of gut punching then tapping down was very precise. And what's more, Turk's time of 46.48 was very optimized for this strategy, meaning his execution was probably really tight. But it at least Sauer had a strategy now. On January 24th, 2015, he did attempts on Soda, with low expectations given the hard execution and 1 in 151 odds. But on attempt number 8, he was able to get out of phase 1. 15! We got one. Should be enough time more. here. Total attempts, 7. Pretty good. Oh, so shit. far. Okay. <laughs> For the day. <laughs> Alright, um... What? Wait what? a minute. Okay. What? What? You got a 46. What? You got a 46. <laughs> Alright. Okay. 46.82. Um... He got it! <laughs> By some miracle, 
It had taken got, wow. just eight attempts to get one in 150 odds. Wild. But this time fell short of Turk by half a second. Wait, I thought he made it. And as oh, kept playing, I don't know. He realized that Turk's 46.48 seemed My to bad. have better execution on that one. than he could get with the strategy he was doing. A high 46 seemed way more likely than a mid 46. So, he had reached a dead end. But just a few days later, someone found something huge. His Ooh. name was Jack Wedge and he had played the game alongside Turk more than a decade prior, at one point holding the Bald Bull 1 world record. <laughs> in 2004. He had come back all these years later to share a new strategy he had just discovered, the screwdriver. After canceling Soda's first two hooks, you could hold down a right dodge, then press B and then down to hit him in the gut right as Matt comes back to the center. This right dodge wasted the exact number of frames so that the gut punch hit Soda on the first frame possible. Oh, <laughs> okay, one, that's pretty clever. Guaranteeing the fastest phase possible. With this, Zallard knew he had a legitimate shot at beating Turk. He did more attempts to see what he could get. And on January 29th, 53 attempts right now, it's 54. He got this. 15? KO. Oh my god, KO? dude. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> Holy shit. Look at this. Holy shit. When Sinister One started to run this game in 2010, he had no idea what was in store for the future. Matt Turk's records were just too good. To quote himself, they had little to no chance at even sniffing some of those times. <laughs> Instead, yeah. over the next five years, this is what the community accomplished. That's it. That's it. That's it. I just beat the fucking Taz. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh yeah. God. Montage time. This is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. World record. World fucking record, dude. Yes. Yes. Holy shit, dude. Oh my god. Yes. <sighs> Holy shit. No fucking way. Yes. Holy shit, it's fucking done. It's fucking done. Dude. Yes! 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 Okay. Fuck yes. On the way yes. up. Yes. The Tyson. Yes. Fuck yes. It's over, dude. That's it. That is it. And Soda Man is gone. And we've reached pretty much the end of the video, guys. Well, that's pretty good. That was pretty good. Uh, isn't there a part two? There definitely has to be a part two. And with that, right. all 14 of Matt Turk's legendary times. I know there's more Mike Tyson early. stuff. It took half a decade, but thanks to the combined efforts of Adelicott, Jack Wedge, Kananaphone, McHazard, yeah, they're very Sinister good. One, and they're really good. This monumental task had been I'd have to say. In the years since, nearly every world record you've seen in this video has been broken. There's been huge advancements in strategy and improvements in execution as well. <laughs> Dang. So, <laughs> let's jump forward. Ten in months time. ago? Okay. Take a look at Not how even that long ago. Chalk up to Matt Turk's times. Thanks for watching. I don't think I can watch it tonight, though. But, uh, I will clip this. Let's see. 423. Okay. One moment, guys. Oh, I think I um think I gotta go through this stream a bit more. Come on, give me the timestamps. <laughs>